two, one. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another Topical Talkology Talk with Andy and Theo. Morning, Theo. Good morning, Andy. How are you? I'm good. Um, cracking on to 2020 already. So Wonderful. Say that again. What, cracking on to 2020 already. Yes, we are. So, um, actually, I don't know, well, when is Blue Monday, anyway? Because we did mention it. Was it the 20th or something? Mm-hmm. I don't know about that. Anyway, so one of the things we were going to start talking about today was... I, I don't think we could actually get away with not talking about um, Prince Harry and Meghan Merkel stepping back as senior royals and... Um, not letting, not letting the, not letting the royal household know what they, their intentions, and just going and doing it in the media. And um, obviously, there's been conversations with the Queen. So, what are your thoughts? Mm. Well, it's enormously difficult because we don't know the truth. We just don't. Um, we we don't know, for instance, whether this is all a result of the Queen and Prince Charles wanted to slim down the monarchy, and purely and simply the result of these two good people stepping away from from top rank royal duties is a result of that we don't know uh, so there are three factors the first is if is, is one of duty so in other words Harry is born through no hard work of his own into uh, rank and privilege and status um, and th- it is I would I would uh, tentatively suggest highly unlikely that he would ever have bagged an A-list celebrity but I, I don't think Megan is an A-list celebrity is she? She's just a no. star in suits She's so maybe not. B-list she, she, yeah, she was um, she had a a very secondary part, actually. She wasn't, you know, she was no, like she a was trying to, she recurring was, she character. She was working her way up, wasn't she? But, but um, the fact is that uh, it's highly unlikely he would have bagged even her. Um, no, I don't believe that. I don't believe that for a second. If he wasn't born into royalty. No, I don't believe that for a second. Um, do, you know, do you know something about Prince Harry? I mean... He, uh, as I said, well, he wouldn't I, have met her for a start. You see, this is the whole oh, point. Maybe not. Maybe maybe not. But the thing is, you could say the same about anything. I mean, would um, would Kate Middleton even have met Prince Andrew had he not been a royal? Possibly, because they both went to St well, Andrew's this University. Is a, but, this is ex- but would he have gone to St Andrew's University? But if that he wasn't is the a royal? point I'm making. So the fact is, we, there is an element of duty, um, which is payback for the wealth and rank and privilege that you are born into. Um, well, and duty I'll means exactly that. Duty I'll means you stick to it and not, you, not, you I'm, take I'm your emotions sure, yeah, away. I've got to say, I'm not sure I agree with that either. It's, because Well, hang on. We're talking, about, we're talking about the options here, and I said there's three options. Okay. So the first is, is acting as an example of sheer duty and professionalism, which means you don't take your emotions into account. That's what professionalism means. Um, and we all respect professionalism. That's why we use it as a compliment for someone. Um, and, of course, Megan also knows that her husband-to-be is has duties and rank and obligations. And as soon as she marries into that, she takes those on. She knows it. She's not stupid. Um, and therefore... The first possibility is that these two people are a result of what's wrong in today's society. In other words, they're entirely self-serving and selfish. So that's the first option. The second option is very much like um, uh, the in ancient Greece, the when when uh, the Greeks worshipped the gods, the Greek gods. The Greek gods had all sorts of strife and infidelities and and uh, killing each other and arguing with each other. And in fact, they, that was simply a reflection of everyday human conflict um, and dilemma. Um, and if the gods had to go through it, then it was okay for humans to. So one could argue that these are just two human beings and they can't help being human because that's their nature. And they're put under stress and they have their weaknesses and vulnerabilities. And they're just doing their best. And we need to respect that. There's enormous pressure put on them. And 
you know, they're, do, they're, they're doing their best. The Queen has compromised. Um, and maybe that's a sign of modern life. Um, third possibility is, um, uh, as we said, that if this is all a storm in a teacup, it means nothing that everything was planned in terms of slimming down the monarchy and in fact there's been rumours about this for over a year and they are being now sent really into the Commonwealth to extend uh, British royalty there and in fact that's a very good thing. Okay, so let's. Let, you're going to have to remind because it was so long ago since I heard the first option. <laughs> what was the first option again? First option is, uh, is, uh, is the fact that um, they, they should have respected their duty and had discipline okay, and look, not been social okay, climbers and all, selfish and self-centred. You, know, you, you may be born into privilege and rank and fortune and all those things, but the thing is, you don't actually choose that lifestyle. So while there's a certain of obliga- so while he's got a certain of obligation to behaving with an uh, with uh, an element of decorum, which he hasn't always done. Um, he, he's chosen to go in a different path. Now, was that was the defining moment in that path when he actually met Meghan and they had a baby? And uh, we don't know about the internal politics of the royal family. We, we, we know it, we know it's had you know it, there was conflict there uh, with what happened with Princess Diana, his mother, um, and also with other members of the royal with other members of the royal family. I think. Um, so the Duchess of Wessex as well. She wasn't really the most favoured uh, royal in the thing. And look at and was Sarah Ferguson as well. So she, she wasn't the most popular either amongst the royal family. Admittedly, she didn't do herself any favours either, and she dug her own grave in that one. But the thing is, and also you've got to consider that Prince Harry, you know, he, he's not blind. He will have undoubtedly heard the rumours that he could actually be the illegit- illegitimate son of um, an infidelity that Princess Diana had. Mm-hmm. And whether it's true or not, that is actually going to have an impact on where he actually fits in as a royal because does he see himself as royal blood or does he see himself as actually um, the, um, you know, I'm the poor relation here? No, he certainly enjoyed the privileges of it. He, he has done, but what else was he to do? Because up until the point that he actually turned 18, he was very much um, under the wing of the royal family. Now, saying that, he didn't go to university, despite the fact that he actually went to Eton, but he did go, um, see, I think he did his A-levels, and went to um, Sandhurst, because mm. all he wanted to do was an army career. Um, and which is what he just did, and he joined the Household Cavalry, if you recall. And he said he, you know, he doesn't have to work as hard for the royal family, to, for being a royal, but he's done, a, he's done a lot in the name of particularly the military and things like this. I mean, he ran these Invictus games and things like that. Not only did he r- run them, he well, set he, them up he, from he nothing. Was, he, was, he put a lot of time no, and he, effort he into that. He set them that. up from nothing. That's a real achievement. Mm. So, so you know, you've got to give them credit where credit's due. Now, you could argue that actually, you know, we, what was going on behind the scenes is well above our pay grade. Now, it all seemed to go wrong, and as I said, this is only a superficial analysis, but it seemed to go wrong after he married Meghan Merkel. Now, when I, I, I think I said a few months ago, on the surface, it looked like a really good match, that he's marrying this American, she, um, you know, she has... Um, she, she's, she's mixed race. It, um, it all modernised the family, and rightly so. And um, all of a sudden, it hasn't really, you know, the fairy tale, the Disney fairy tale ending hasn't really sort of transpired. You know, you've well, had the horse-drawn b- carriage, you've had the big royal wedding, but all of a sudden... Because Meghan hasn't been playing the game. She's been behaving in a precious manner. And there have been rumours... She has rumors actually behaved with that, that There's, there's yes. rumours following her. For instance, for instance, even the phrases have been coined, like, I've been markled. In other words, once she's used you, she's not interested in you. Um... And uh, you know that's that, that that is unavoidable. Yeah, and and the thing is, she's look, she's definitely had a, a, an enormous amount of coaching and preparation to act and how to conduct herself. But the thing is, 
it's still early days, and it, I mean, it took Princess Diana a long time before she actually transformed from shy nineteen-year-old to royal to the royal stature. That yeah, she but this achieved. is not a shy nineteen-year-old. This is a thirty-six-year-old divorced movie star. Okay, but 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 look at look at part of the background. Look at the conflict she's had within her own family. I mean, for, for God's sake, her, her father, a personal letter she sent to her father, he's giving it, he's giving it to the Mail on, Mail on, was it Mail on Sunday? Mm. Or the Mail? He's given it to one of the newspapers, sold it to the newspapers. But in we don't know the story behind that either. For instance, well, it may have been her father trying to communicate with her. In other words, he knew that that was the only way of even getting to see her. That, that, really? Because I've got to say, she's, she, you know, if, if there's a reason why she's not communicating with him, it could be because there's a lack of trust there. And all he's done is reinforce that lack of trust by sending a personal letter she sent him to the, to, to the media. Mm. So what does that say about the guy's character? And by all accounts, uh, she, she will win because when you write a letter, you own the copyright and the person you send it to well, look, physically has the letter but doesn't well, own the copyright. Well, look, they want to be financially independent, so they've talked about being financially independent. And... Um, you know, maybe suing people is one way of, of, of doing so. Raising their profile yes. as well. And it also raises their profile. But secondly... Um, Apparently she gets uh, something like £3 million just from Instagram advertising. She does, alone. Mm -hmm. she, she probably will do it. She probably does. So, in some ways, um, I wouldn't say most likely, I'd say most definitely... There is a strong PR company behind them in preparation, and they've probably done a lot of research in terms of um, how they can become a, a, a double brand, basically. Mm. A, a, um, you know, a bit like David Beckham and Victoria Beckham. You see, a lot, of, a lot has been said about the public backlash to her. Uh, as opposed to Kate Middleton, so she she will do some some of the same moves as Kate Middleton, but she gets criticised. Like what? I can't specifically remember, but they commented on, for instance, the way she held a baby bump, and and people people were furious about this apparent breaker protocol. But Kate did it too, and I think I think the key thing here is the royal family is the ultimate British establishment icon. And if you think you can go into it and not be wholesale part of it, then that's a big mistake. And, and people will react badly to it and they will become authoritarian. Remember, remember when, a, when a society feels threatened, they become authoritarian from the bottom up, not the top down, from the bottom up. So now we're talking about Brexit and immigrants and, and the royal family, our icon, being infiltrated by someone who thinks they cannot be establishment. That's the reason why there's a public backlash mm. against her. Well, look, whatever happens, I mean, the thing is, I think they should actually still be doing, you know, certain royal duties um, or, or, or take the title away from them because... You know they shouldn't have the title if they do, if they're not going to if they're not going to do that. But saying that, um, they can probably do a lot of good out there. I mean, as I said, Princess Diana did an incredible amount of. Work but that's the plan, isn't it? That they're, that they're going. And I think maybe they look to follow in her footsteps, and a PR company have advised them, and this is where they can go, and this is what they can do. There'll be a lot of obviously media interviews. There'll be a lot of um, tours around the US and Canada. Um, but that's the plan. Know. The Queen has said, continue and pair down fashion and perhaps spread spread our royalty through the Commonwealth. Oh, right. I, I didn't see that. Is Canada, that what she said? No, because Canada's part of the Commonwealth uh, anyway. Exactly. So, but also, they can still go and visit other countries and they'll have that royal protection and things like this. So, yeah, so they, there's a lot of money to be made by even stepping back from that. Um, and, and to be honest, the, the media in the UK are probably the most vicious in this country compared to anybody else in the world. I mean, even America, where I find CNN and MSNBC 
diabolically biased and I mean um, mind you so can Fox News but they can be just they can they can be vicious but we we, we uh, it's almost like we've taken that to the next level um, why do you I'm, think that is <laughs> Is it I because America it's, it's people well, are more litigious? I think it's the way we've always been. Um, you know, I mean, w w you know. It, it